I am not sure if the following content is true or false. I just take gossip, rumor, and tea from gossip blogs, magazines, books, wherever I can find it, and I ball it all together and I tell you guys a story. Yeah, I did this new intro because I was bored. So, anyways, let's get to it. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Ashley with Ashley Says So and I am back with another video. Please hit like and subscribe. Now that that's out the way, it is time for me to shout out a few channels. The first channel belongs to our thespian auntie, honey, and this channel is called Acting Up With Char. Second channel is KK Beyond. Next channel is Struggle Reviews. Next channel is Urban Girl Gardening and Lifestyle. And last but not least by a long shot, honey, I even need to do a drum roll for this. Hollywood Nation. The person that created the channel is very special. He has been with me from day one. He was one of my very first subscribers when I um, started this channel. So again, y'all go check out all of those channels that I named. They are all great channels. Now, baby, it's time to get to the business of the day, honey. And this is an old Hollywood scandal hit peak. And this is a new segment of the old Hollywood scandals where the person of interest was not really a Hollywood celebrity, but they definitely were historical celebrity. We won't do much background information. We won't do much bio information. We are here to do a hit and run, baby. And these videos might actually be even more offensive than my old Hollywood scandal videos. Today we are going to be talking about Jackie Bouvier, aka Jackie Kennedy, aka Jackie Onassis. Oh, and the terminology for these videos is, I bet y'all didn't know this like this. I bet y'all didn't know Jackie Kennedy was rumored to be just as bad as her husband when it came to sleeping around. Hun, and the gossip claims that by the time she got to college, she took a break and she went off to France. And Miss Jackie, who had pretended to be very virginal and very put together in the United States, used to sit over there in France at upscale bars, had a cigarette dangling from her fingertip, and ended up going home with many foreign politicians, foreign princes, and foreign dignitaries. Now, while it's said that she most likely did not sleep with every single one of these men, but a man named John P. Marquand definitely hit it. As a matter of fact, said he had Jackie Bouvier pinned up in an elevator, baby. And her back was against the wall, her skirt was hitched up over her waist, and her legs was lifted up and pinned, honey, with her knees facing to the sky. That's one version of the story. The other version of the story says that Jackie wasn't leaned up against no wall. Actually, it said that Mr. John Marquand had her bent over with her skirt hitched up. Going from the back, child. Baby, the folks say that that was Jacqueline over in France, but when she came back to America, she was back to little old innocent Jack. Said that she would play this little role of being very focused on her books and very serious. And the boys in the USA, of course, or the boys that she went to college with, they would be very attracted to this reserve type shy nature. You know, to them, Jackie was not the play around kind. She was the marrying kind. Yeah. Honey said the boys would be clamoring for a chance for Jackie to pick the claimed that she dated several of them and would drop each one to the side whenever a new one with more money or a better name came along. Baby, the girl played a game so good that by the time 1952 hit, Sister Girl was engaged to two men. One's name was Ormond Decay and the other one's name was John Houston. Now, Ormond was okay with the money, but baby, it's claimed that that John Houston was rolling in dough, baby. Even though Jackie was engaged to both of these men, John Houston was the one that she knew she was going to marry. Now, if you're wondering these two guys did not know anything about each other jackie was a smoother criminal than michael jackson honey somebody even said they saw her doing the michael jackson lean okay i made that part up but anyways like i said by 1952 she is engaged to two different men well when 1953 came around she went to a dinner and she met this very handsome very charming very witty john f kennedy her undercarriage heated up a little bit, hun. But then she heard the chatter around the room referring to this young man as the next big senator and even had his eyes set on a future presidency. By this time, forget the heated up undercarriage. Baby Jackie had broke out into a full-blown sweat. A politician who was about to be a senator and also had a great chance to be a president? Oh, honey, titles, titles, titles. Who wouldn't want to be a senator's wife and better yet, a first lady? And then she found out that his family was loaded. Not that Jackie Kennedy needed any of this money. I want you guys to know that. She grew up very wealthy herself, but this has nothing to do with her family or her family money. This is about Jackie marrying well for herself. Honey, the first thing Jackie did was pick up the phone and call John Houston and Ormond and told them, well, boys, it's been fun while it lasted, but now 
keep my name out your mouth. Honey, Jackie ain't had no time for these men or these so-called ex-fiancés blowing up her spot. And gossip on the streets is that Jackie Bouvier started to go on the prowl. She made it her business to be with JFK every chance she got. And she played this very, oh, hi. I'm still young, I'm just really discovering the world. Sha said Jackie was acting like she was basically a newborn baby. Really acting naive to the way men were. Some people say if you didn't know any better, you would have thought that the girl didn't even know what a kiss was. But Miss Thang had it in the bag. This act had JFK steaming up under his collar, honey. He's like, would you look at that? A perfect virginal dog. I'm the lion and she's my prey. Not realizing she had already been at least five other men's prey. Sister girl had him fooled, honey. He really thought he was gonna be the one to awaken this sexual energy in her. And Jackie played the role good. It's a story I'll hear about when they were dating. JFK came home from one of their dates and was talking to his homeboy. Telling them things like, you know, man, I had it in the back of my car. Bruh, guess who took the bra off? Guess who took the bra? And the story goes, what he was saying is like I just said, he took Jackie in the back of his car, he got her to remove her top as well as her bra, and he actually was palming and fondling her to top. And he went on to tell his boys that I would have had that sweet thing right then and there if the cops hadn't showed up. And it said that this story is true. And the cop showed up and he shined the flashlight in the window. And it said that when JFK looked up at the cop, the cop was shining the light and then the cop started smiling and basically told him, oh, I'm sorry, Senator, continue what you were doing. All of the stories I saw didn't say anything about them going all of the way. But basically what I was trying to make clear to you guys is that how excited that he was to feel like, you know, man, I almost cracked her open, I almost got it. And so by the time he proposed to her, he was salivating to get his hands on Jackie seven days a week, twice on Sundays, honey. Jackie's no-nothing little ploy had landed her a big fish. Some would say the biggest fish in America at that time. And see, while y'all sitting up there listening to all this with your eyes bucked, that's because it's claimed that Jackie played y'all too. The word on the streets is that Jackie had the public thinking she was this uh, dainty little flower, this little damsel in distress, so much so that they sympathized with her. You know, they cried for her when her husband was cheating on her. But that's because the public didn't know that it was alleged that Jackie Kennedy had many a man's head squares down there between her thighs. Baby, listen at this. The folks out there are saying that JFK may have had a sex room in the White House, but baby, his wife had a sex house. Said that Jackie used to always complain about the stress, you know, of being the first lady, or she was having all these aches and pains, or she was depressed. She just really needed to get away. And when she got to that property, wherever that so-called property was, there was no telling which man was gonna be waiting for her. Baby, they said one night it was Marlon Brando sitting up there waiting. They had dinner, and after that, Jackie said that she wanted to dance. So Marlon got up and pulled her up and started dancing with her to this slow song. Said Jackie put her head on his chest and kind of pressed her breast up against him. And Marlon didn't really know what to think because he was told this was just gonna be a dinner with the first lady. Well, baby, they say he got the picture clear and wide when Jackie sat up there and pressed her thigh in between his legs while they was dancing, honey. Basically trying to get a feel on her thigh of what was hanging low. Baby said that Jackie leaned in for that kiss and took him right down the couch. Took him. All of him inside. Baby, I bet y'all didn't know that they said that William Holden was in that house too. He said that Jackie was loose, but she wasn't loose as a goose. Folks say that he said her mouth game was slaw, baby, and was going around telling everybody in Hollywood that every night that he stayed there, he taught her how to perfect her mouth game. By the last night, she was a pro, honey, could suck peanut butter through a straw. The throaty body queen. And then listen to this, listen to this. It's also said that William Holden was mad at JFK because he should have received a thank you call because William said, I'm the one that taught your wife how to do that. You ain't put in the time to teach her nothing, but you sitting up there reaping all the good throat benefit. What? Child. I bet y'all didn't know that the tea on the street says that Jackie also had Warren Beatty up at that house. Peter Lawford, Gregory Peck, Frank Sinatra, and Paul Newman. And even had the nerve to call her sister and tell her that Paul Newman's thing lang looked just like her husband JFK's thing lang And I know by now some of y'all just sitting up here watching this video shaking y'all head like but baby, this next bit of tea about to burn your lips and have them curled up over your teeth like this. Why come it is folks out here saying that Jacqueline Kennedy was a trifling frog-eyed boot that didn't care about any other woman on this planet and would stab 
anybody in the back. Baby, I'm so glad I'm covered by this screen so y'all can't slap me. So after JFK passes away, Jackie just could not be alone. She needed some support. She needed a shoulder to cry on, but a woman's shoulder was just not strong enough. She needed a man's shoulder. And it didn't matter if that man was married. Honey, it didn't even matter if that man was her brother-in-law. Child of folks say that Bobby Kennedy was that man and he spent so much time taking care of Jackie that he practically moved into the house with her after JFK died. Baby said one night Jackie was just a crying and just a moping. Bobby went to rubbing her dog on back and Jackie let him. She also let him slide up under the sheets with her and then slide into somewhere else. And then this wasn't no one time, oops, I made a mistake thing. Bobby and Jackie were basically a couple. Like they were basically the new Kennedy couple. And this ain't me sprinkling no says so on it. This is what it said it was. Baby, Bobby became her husband and the father to her children. He helped her raise those children. The folks say he was over there playing games with the kids, reading them bedtime stories, and was still there every morning when they went to breakfast. And I know some of y'all out there thinking, but wait a minute, was this man not married? You would be correct, this man was married to Ethel Skakel. Child, these messy folks on the street say that when Ethel brought it up and was like, you know, Bobby, you're spending a lot of time over there. Child said Bobby told her, not now, Ethel. Ethel. Jackie needs me. And listen to how messy it's claimed that Jackie was handling all of this, honey. So it said that Bobby had got a vacation together where he and Ethel were supposed to go on a yacht, but he ended up inviting Jackie alone. Not only did Jackie go, it's claimed that one of those nights aboard the yacht, they were sitting at a table having dinner, and Jackie and Bobby excused themselves from the dinner table, went down below deck, proceeded to get a quickie in, and then walked back upstairs smiling and giggling all in Ethel's face. Baby, I would've bust Jackie right in between them far apart eyes she got. But Ethel did not. She sat there and she took it. In fact, she knew that her husband was sleeping with Jackie. She knew that her husband had basically left her and her kids to be with Jackie and her children. And she sat and she bared it all. Because Ethel Skakel, it's claimed, basically made her whole life about being a Kennedy. She was one of those old school obedient wives and she would look the other way no matter what. She would not even raise her voice to her husband. Honey, somebody is out here saying that they were over at Ethel and Bobby's house and this was after JFK had died and when Jackie was all over the magazine cover said that Bobby was sitting at the table looking at the magazine. He looked up and said to Ethel, not to the other person now, said this to Ethel. God, look at Jackie, look at here. She's such a beautiful woman, ain't she? I mean, look at her. Uh, excuse me? Like I said, Ethel took it in stride. The person at the table with him said that Ethel was just like, you know, yeah, she is. She's an attractive woman. And I want to say poor Ethel, but child, folks on the street say that if Ethel ever saw my little black self, the only thing she'd have for me was the people's elbow and a drop it on my doggone neck, honey. But see, that's for Ethel Kennedy's hit piece video. So for right now, let's get back to Jackie. It was almost like Jackie felt like she was so revered, like she was up here, and she was like the big famous Kennedy wife, that if she wanted to sleep with her brother-in-law, so be it. If her brother-in-law wanted to buy her gifts, whatever it was that anybody wanted to do or her brother-in-law wanted to do, she was Jackie, like her sister-in-law needed to stand to the side. It is what it is. And it's alleged that not only was she like this to her sister-in-law, Ethel, baby, they say that she was like this to her younger sister-in-law, Joan, as well. Ooh, that tea just burnt your throat, didn't it? Well, honey, we keeps it hot over here at this channel because word on the street is that Jackie was sleeping with Bobby and Ted at the same time, baby. Said that Bobby was her main guy and everything she wanted in a husband, basically her husband, and Ted was essentially her side piece. And I mean, it's really crazy. Like the whole setup is crazy. So as my sister-in-law, I'm supposed to let you sleep with my husband because your husband has been murdered and because your husband was president and you're his wife and all this popular and all this kind of stuff. I'm supposed to hush my mouth and let you sleep with my husband? Apparently that's how it was in the Kennedy family. But then something happened. Bobby ended up wanting something even more than he wanted Jackie's famous legs wrapped around him. And that was the presidency. So all of a sudden, Jackie would find herself calling his office and being told things like, no, Mr. Robert Kennedy is not in. He's out to dinner with his wife. Or, no, Mr. Robert Kennedy is not available. His wife is in the office visiting with him. Baby, you may as well change Bobby's name to Incognito, honey, because he realized that if he wanted the presidency, he could 
not let this scandal get out. Nobody could know that he basically had taken up with his sister-in-law. Are you crazy? And so it's said that it did kind of hurt Jackie's feelings a little bit, but she still supported his presidency. She went and campaigned for him, put her name on his seal. One person who wasn't mad about it though was baby brother Ted, who had been happily waiting to fill his brother's shoes. But I suppose in the end, Jackie did not find in Ted what she found in Bobby, because even though it's claimed that she and Ted continued to mess around, they did not last as long. Now listen at this. So you know after JFK passed away, when she actually got remarried, it was to a man named Aristotle Onassis. Well, word on the street is that Jackie and Aristotle had actually been friends for years. So much so that Jackie had gone at least one or two times to go visit Aristotle over in Greece. Now this is while JFK was still alive right here. I think the first time she went because she had ended up having a miscarriage, and I think the second time may have been when JFK was either cheating with Marilyn Monroe or he was messing around with somebody and she got ticked about it so she went to, over to Greece to get away. So she goes over to Greece and she's entertained by Aristotle and his girlfriend Maria Kali. But the first time she went when she had the miscarriage she just went over there on a friendly trip. But it's claimed the second time when JFK was cheating on her and I guess she felt like she wanted to get back at JFK. So baby they said that this time she sat up there and smiled all in Maria's face and when Maria went to bed was sleeping with her dog on man said that Jackie was kicking them legs up every night for Aristotle. Baby, the gossip claims that Aristotle sent her home to JFK with an $80,000 bracelet around her wrist. So now that JFK has passed away, Aristotle is really trying to woo Jackie. He starts paying all her bills, starts buying her whatever gifts she wants because he wants to marry Jackie. And Jackie Kennedy, just like her past history has shown, or at least the gossip and it's alleged, her past history has shown, put herself first. She told Aristotle, yes, I will marry you. No matter that she been sitting up there smiling in his girlfriend's face. Him and Maria were together for 10 years, possibly even more. She had wanted to marry this man and had stood there for 10 years and this guy X'd her out and married Jackie within a few months. Maria was so heartbroken and had such an attachment to Aristotle that she ended up becoming his side chick. But even this was not enough to repair her broken heart. And of course it's not. Now she's a side chick. Now she can't even be seen in public with the man that she loves. Went from being his main thing terrible. And Gossip on the Streets claims that Maria ended up dying of a broken heart a few years later at the age of 53. And maybe that is true and maybe it's not. But one thing about it, baby, Aristotle got his. Child, them folks said that after a month of being married to Jackie, Aristotle was telling anybody who had listened that he had made the biggest mistake of his life. Said that she made him feel like she was very in love and they were all close and all of that. As soon as she got a ring on her finger, all the closeness and romance disappeared. And even though she she never said it with words. It was pretty much like through her actions, she basically let him know, okay, I married you for your money. Like, you know what I'm saying? What can you do for me? And then he went on to say that she spent immense amounts of his money. And he said he regretted marrying a woman who the only thing that really went through her head was the new fashions of the week. And that's another little bit of gossip that I want to touch on because I've read several places that that is the real Jackie Kennedy. She was shallow. She was materialistic. She was after money and she was a social climber and it's claimed that that whole personality about her being worried about social issues and injustice and all this kind of stuff it's claimed that that was America's perception of her so basically they projected that on her and the tea on the streets also says that Jackie knew that that was the public perception of her so she ended up creating a character for the public as well that doggone interview voice that she used hello citizens Jack he's always thought about the American people and I'm um, Yes, Dr. Spock. Can you tell us more about children's care? Baby, the folks said that that was a doggone made up voice. Said that Jackie didn't really talk like that. And really what it seems like all of this gossip and rumor boils down to is that Jackie Kennedy was almost like a chameleon. You know what I'm saying? She could switch those personalities on and off to get ahead wherever and whenever she needed to. And I done already burnt y'all lips off. I already burnt the inside of your throat. So I might as well go ahead and rip out the jugular. Why come the folks say it was another Kennedy woman who had to turn her eyes while Jackie messed with her husband. This woman's name was Rose Kennedy. And no ma'am, she was not a sister. She was the matriarch. Her father-in-law Joe was just like his sons. As a matter of fact, there are many tales out here about Joe sharing women with his son. 
Well, honey, like I said, it's claimed that Jackie Kennedy was one of those women. Welcome to the first Old Hollywood Scandals hit piece. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will be back with another video soon. And yes, our next video will be a regular Old Hollywood Scandals video. Bye.